My name is Victor Kaula. In today's presentation, we are looking at the office of the deacon. The, the first qualification that the deacon must have. He must be a baptized Seventh-day Adventist member in regular standing. He must have an ability to work for God and have reverence for God. And he must have a good reputation with others, even the community. The deacon is, supposed, is expected to be somebody who is honest and also spiritually led. People expect a lot from them. So as, an, as a deacon, you are supposed to be somebody who is honest. And you are expected to be a good steward. Somebody who is faithful in coming to church with your family and even in contributing your resources to the work of God in form of offerings and even a tithe. You are expected to be an example to others. People look at you as somebody who is there to help them grow spiritually. You cannot help others to grow if you yourself, you are not an example. Therefore, it is important for you to retain a faithful tithe and give offerings and support all the programs that the church conducts. And also you need to, be, uh, to have an ability to teach and preach the word of God. Be ready to teach the word of God. You cannot teach the word of God if you don't study the word of God. Be somebody who is prayerful, somebody who uh, study the word of God each and every day. Not only reading the Bible because you want to, pre to present, but reading the word of God as something that is food for your soul. Because if you read the word of God each and every day, we grow spiritually. And if we are growing spiritually, it is easy for us to share the word of God. And also you have to be somebody who is a team player. Because where you have more than uh, two or five deacons, you need to ha you have a council of deacons. Learn to be a team player. Somebody who is very willing to work with others. That is very important. And you also be working with an elder. So be somebody who is willing to work with others. You need to be somebody who people can trust. Never betray other people's trust. Because as a deacon, there might be some privileged information that people share with you. Never share things that have come to you through privileged information you may have as you discharge your duties with others. Be a good husband. Be a good man of your house because that is a, a requirement. If you are a good family man, you can easily lead the work of God because many times some deacons, we have heard of rumors that, for example, a deacon is an abuser in the home, but when he goes to the church, he wants to minister to the word of God. It doesn't leave a good picture. Avoid appearance of evil. Avoiding appearance of evil is trying to be honest as you can. Be honest when you are in the market. Be honest when you are at, the, uh, at work. Wherever you are, try to be honest. Or oh, what are the duties for a deacon? Number one, as a deacon, the deacons where you have more than two or three deacons at the church, you do have what we call deaconess, deacons council. Deacons council is formed of all the uh, men who have been elected as deacons. They meet maybe every week or the time that they can agree to discuss or deliberate on various issues. The deacons council is chaired by one of the deacons who is elected as a, as a head deacon. So as a head deacon, he's there to make sure that deacons, they meet at the times where they make plans for the church or for the, or their operation in that year. So the head deacon is there to help other deacons to function fully. Because as deacons, you cannot all be doing the same thing. The church may have various assignments. When you are assigning deacons into various areas, it is also good to see their gifts. Because maybe the other elders, they may be greeters or ushers. You need to have people placed at the right position. Other people, they don't even smile. Much as they may want to smile, but they don't know how to smile. You cannot allow them to be at the door of the church to welcome people. You can also place them. They may be gifted in another area. Therefore, make sure that 
you see the gifts that the people have where possible. Align the people in the areas where they can operate fully. Deacons work hand in hand with the, with the church elders. Because the church manual says that while the elder has 50 people in his constituency, there is a need for him to have two deacons. Because a deacon is responsible for 25 people. Some of you may be asking that, what if there are no 25 people? This is just a standard. As I've said, these principles can be contextualized depending on whatever corner of the world you are in. But in a normal circumstances whereby you have 50 people under one elder, a deacon is supposed to have 25 people. Your responsibility is also to visit and take care of those people. See that they, they are taken care of. Because deacons are there to support members in various ways. One of the things that you need to do as deacons, you need to come up with a plan for the whole year. And also come up with a budget. Because deacons are very are responsible. They are the custodians of the church. In other words, they are the ones who make sure that the church is in the good shape. The church is well kept. And even in the church, the funds or the tables or everything is operating. If there is any problem, any fault in the church, deacons are there to find somebody to fix them so that by the time the church is coming or the uh, Sabbath is coming for people to come and wash, everything should be working. So you need also to organize uh, Holy Communions. You need to have a budget. You need to see that you have enough utensils that the church can use. So make a budget, the operational budget, for the whole year. And that budget must be presented to the finance committee and also it goes to the board. And once the budget has been accepted, you can start working on the budget when the church is operating. You have to be ready to make sure that when worship is taking place, you are helping the people to have to be in the church in the right way. For example, in churches where you have got uh, air condition, you have to make sure that the air condition has been set at the right temperature. Or maybe the windows are open. If it's cold, maybe the temperatures are good. Because when you are in the conducive environment, it makes worship to be well. So as deacons, they are also to see that if there is any disruption, you are there to bring order in the worship. You are there to work closely with your elders in visitations. One of the things that elders do is that they do visitations. When they are visiting the members, they visit with their deacons. Because an elder is not allowed to visit alone. When he is doing the visitations, the deacon is there with him visiting the members, praying with them. So as a deacon, you can also have visitations. But one of the principles that I can share about visitation, you don't visit your alone. There is need for you to be accompanied. That's the reason why Jesus, when he sent his disciples, he sent them two by two. It is good to go by twos, other than just going alone. Because uh, uh, for accountability purposes, when there are two of you, it is very important because if something crops up, you have somebody who can testify that you did not do such a thing. But if you are just alone, there is no way you can testify or you, people can believe a witness that is given by one person. So be cautious with God's work when you are doing God's work. And also as deacons, you are there to collect the offerings. And after you collect the offerings, you are supposed to count. Make sure after you count the offerings, they are all remitted to uh, the treasure. Because when you are counting, the treasure is there. But the treasure has no responsibility to count all the offerings. As you are counting the offerings, make sure that it is not only one deacon. It's good in bigger churches to have a bigger group. You can assign a certain group that these deacons are the ones who are working on that particular Sabbath, or on that particular worship service. Do not go to church or to any activity without uh, scheduling people who are supposed to work on that particular day. As a head deacon, you are supposed to make sure that uh, that particular worship, everybody knows what they are supposed to, to do. Because sometimes people come to church, even deacons, 
without knowing what they are supposed to do. But it is good for them to know in advance before they come to church what they are supposed to do. And also it is your duty to advise people or to prepare people when there is a wedding or when there is baptism. The deacons play a bigger role in the church preparing candidates when they are getting ready for baptism. On the day of baptism or even before baptism, they advise them on how they can dress on that day. So work with your elder and also make sure you have a church manual because in the church manual, you have a lot of counsels that you can get from there. Follow through those things because sometimes we do shortcuts and the shortcuts most of the times are not good. It is good as a leader to be ethical and you are ethically correct if you follow the guidelines that the church has. There are meetings that you are requested to attend. It is important to attend all the meetings. As a matter of fact, when there is a meeting and you know that you, are no, you will not be able to attend, it is good to send an apology in advance. As a deacon and even as a, a, a committee for deacons, you are supposed to give reports quarterly to the church board and even to the office of the pastor. Because when you are working, it is good to know that reporting is a very vital in every leadership. Make sure you have got good reports. Make sure the inventory of the church. People should know what are the things that we have here at the church. People should, you should have an updated inventory for the church so that people can know what they have at the church. This helps you at the end of the year to have a well-documented report which you can present as a handover in the cases where a new leadership is coming in. It is the responsibility of the church members to support you. The church is supposed to give you the budget, to give you the money for operations. This is the reason why you need to make a budget at the beginning of the year and once it has been voted, it will help you to operate. There shouldn't be a time when people uh, do not have enough resources or people are failing to have Holy Communion because there was no money to buy ingredients for, for Holy Communion. Also make sure that your reports are well documented so that when audits are happening, they can see your reports and see that the, the money that you get and the receipts that you have, they are matching because most of the times people are very negligent in terms of recording. But as a church, we are also audited each and every year. So it is important after you make expenses, bring the receipts and make your records straight. And if ever you are supposed to report to the treasurer, remit the reports in time because it helps the treasurer to also balance up the accounts. The deacon has no authority to dismiss or to disperse somebody. The head deacon is the one who is supposed to attend the church board. But at some times, maybe the head deacon may not be around. A, a deacon may be assigned to represent him in the board. So if you have been asked to go, be willing to represent your head deacon in the church board that is meeting. Remember your limitations. You have been chosen for that church. So your authority is for the church that elected you. And you are the deacon for that church for that particular year. For you to function fully, there is a need for an ordination. You are supposed to be ordained. So a pastor is supposed to ordain all the deacons. If you were ordained previously, and the second year or another year of being elected, if you have been in regular standing, there is no need for another ordination because the ordination that you had, it is still standing. Therefore, we only ordain Deacons that, have never, that were not ordained previously, those who have been elected, for them to operate fully in the church. Make sure you support. But in case you go to another church, they ask you to work and you are an ordained deacon. If they ask you to do that, you can do. But you have no power to go to another church and say, I'm a deacon, I want to operate. Because you are the deacon for the church that elected you. If you find this material very important, please share with other deacons that you may know. Share with others and subscribe to this channel. Because by subscribing, it means you get updates of all the training that are coming up. You are with me, Victor Kaula. Thank you for listening.